Hello to you, my very best friend. Welcome to a YouTube video. In this one in particular, we're going to go over the fragrance house of Vertus Paris. Or is it Vertus? 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 I don't really know. I'm probably going to call it Vertus or Vertus. They're a brand that I've been interested in for quite a while, frankly because of how cool their bottles look. A while back I got this sample set of eight of their fragrances, and I am going to rank them in the order of my least favorite to my most favorite. But before that I wanted to give you just a general overview of the house as a whole. First of all, all of these fragrances that I've tried have been very, very high quality. When you first start getting into niche fragrances, this is kind of what you're hoping for. The ingredients all smell very top notch, the fragrances are unique and interesting, and the performance on all of them are fantastic. Second thing, is these fragrances have a sort of synthetic bent to them. Now a lot of times we use the word synthetic as a derogatory term, but that's not the case here, and frankly I kind of prefer it this way. This synthetic edge that these fragrances have give them a almost metallic sheen. It makes them feel like sharp knives that cut through the air. The term synthetic has sort of become synonymous with cheap, but no, like I just said, all high quality stuff. I think of the synthetic quality of these fragrances as being somewhat similar to how Montal does their fragrances, except on a much higher level. So don't let that term synthetic scare you, just keep that in mind as we're going through these fragrances. So with that said, let's get onto the list proper. At number 8, the fragrance that I like the least is Chaos. Now Chaos is an interesting duality of a fragrance. On the one hand, you have a very aquatic fragrance, one that smells like the sea breeze, a very nice aquatic cologne that you would wear on the beach, on a boat, at a seaside restaurant, something like that. On the other hand, <laughs> You have something that I think is supposed to smell like ambergris or like seaweed, but really it just kind of winds up smelling like teriyaki chicken. And this teriyaki chicken note is wildly unpleasant. And Chaos is so strange because it smells like you're wearing two different things. These two ends of the fragrance are very much opposed and they don't really work together. Yeah, Chaos is just strange. I think if they made this into two fragrances it would be much more acceptable on both ends, but as it stands it's just too strange to wear. And of course, as always, the stinkiest fragrance that I like the least is the one that lasts the longest and performs the best. I was doing some testing and I got a little bit of chaos on my workout shirt, and of course even two or three washes later I can still smell it on the tip of the sleeve, so yeah, there's a lot of potential with this one, but as it stands it's just too unwearable. I'll give it a 3.5 out of 10. Next up at number 7 we have Fresh Orient. This fragrance is fine. <laughs> really, I don't have a whole lot to say about it. Of all of these fragrances, I think this is one of the least inspiring. It's a lot of white florals and a little bit of wood. I think this is just like a really high-end example of classic perfumery. Personally, and some people may not agree with this, I think classic perfumery is classic for a reason. It is something that we should look back on with a fondness while we enjoy our modern perfumery with all of its fun nooks and crannies. Really, I'm struggling to find something to say about it. Again, not a bad fragrance at all, but just not not inspiring, not interesting or unique like any of these other fragrances are. I think this is a perfectly good 6 out of 10. At number 6 we have 1001. This is described as an amber floral fragrance and as you can see from the notes there's a lot going on. And while this smells really good, I think its busyness is sort of its downfall. There's so much going on that it's tough to put a finger on it. And that's something that I generally like in a fragrance, but here it's just a little bit too much. It's just a little bit too muddy. The Vertus Amber is very sweet, and you get a lot of that mixed with a lot of different florals and a lot of different spices. This is a very warm spicy fragrance, more than I think the notes give it credit for. It's definitely unique, it's definitely complex, I just think it's a little too complex for its own good. The complexity sort of keeps it from having its own identity. So even despite the nits that I'm picking, I still think this is a really great fragrance. I'll give 1001 a 7 out of 10. At number 5, we have Soul Patchouli. This was actually the fragrance that I was most excited to try. Now I've told this story before in my review of Zerjoff's Tony Iommi. I don't know if I posted that on YouTube or if that was just something that I posted only to TikTok. I can't quite remember. But I had a friend in high school who has since passed away who used to wear a vial of patchouli extract around his neck. And it was a smell that we all, I don't know if I would say hated, but it was one that we put up with. And it's a smell that, as I've gotten older, has become nostalgic and cozy to me. And Zerjoff's Tony Iommi, which has a very heavy patchouli note in it, is potentially my favorite fragrance ever made. And so I saw the name Soul Patchouli and was very excited. Was I let down? 
maybe a little bit. That patchouli smell that I like is very sweet. It's very green, very fragrant. It is more like an oil and extract than it is like the plant itself. It can be very sweet. It can, in some cases, be almost chocolatey, but sole patchouli is not that. It is a dusty earthen patchouli. It is very aromatic. I don't know if my rating of this fragrance would be any different if I didn't have that bias, if I didn't have that predisposition, if I didn't have that idea in my head of what I thought I was going to smell. But again, like I've said for the past few fragrances, this one isn't bad. It's actually quite good. <laughs> I would almost say that this is a patchouli for people who don't like patchouli. It's worth checking out for sure. I'm gonna give Soul Patchouli a 7.5 out of 10. I am going to switch the battery on my camera. Hopefully the frame doesn't change too much, but if it does, that's why. Okay, we're back. Hopefully it's not too different. At number four, we have Bois et Cuir, which en Francais means wood and leather. If we were ranking fragrances on the accuracy of their names, this one would get a 10 out of 10. Does it smell like wood and leather? Why, yes it does. Yes, despite being a self-described leather hater, here is another leather fragrance that I am finding that I actually really like. One of the first fragrances that I bought many years ago was Armani's Eau de Cedre. <laughs> Ced, cedra, eau de cedra, cedra, eau de cedra, eau de cedra, cedra, cedar water, water of cedar, eau de cedra. You know, I can speak French okay, but something about the words that end with R sounds, I can just never figure out how to pronounce properly. Anyways, the cedar in that, or the uh, cedra, if you so choose, uh, comes across almost as boozy. Off the top of my head, I don't think there's any alcoholic notes in that, but my point is that has influenced how I smell woods in fragrances, specifically cedar. And that sort of influences how I smell this fragrance. To me, the wood smell in it comes across as kind of boozy. Actually, I don't know off the top of my head if there is any booze in these fragrances. You know what, why don't we check? No, there is not. But something in my head, or my nose, I guess, still points to that anyways. And the leather in here, again, as a self-described leather hater, is very pleasant. It's not rough in any way, it's not animalic, and I think this goes back to what I was saying at the beginning of this episode about these fragrances having a synthetic edge to them. The leather in this does not smell like an old leather jacket, it doesn't smell like a baseball glove, it does not smell photorealistic. It smells, more than anything, like a synthetic approximation of what leather could smell like. And I think that absolutely works in this fragrance's favor. So if you are a leather hater like me, don't be afraid by the name. This is a fragrance that absolutely surprised me. I am going to give this fragrance, whose name I will not try to pronounce again, an 8.5, maybe even a 9. This is really good. Okay, on to the top three. In third place, we have Oud Noir. Now, Oud Noir actually smells surprisingly similar to Soul Patchouli and Y Queer. It's almost like it took the best parts of those fragrances and mixed them together. When I think of Noir fragrances, I think of something that is meant to be worn with a suit, a fragrance that is a combination of a lot of different darker florals, some woods to give it some depth. It is something that is very elegant and dressed up, and that is very much what Oud Noir is. I don't think the name necessarily fits. To me, this doesn't smell like any Oud I've ever smelled. If it does, it smells like a very synthetic approximation of Oud. And again, this is where that synthetic element really comes into play. This is a gorgeous, cutting, aromatic fragrance. This is sharp. This is metallic. This is something that is going to stand out in a crowded room full of people who are also wearing fragrances. There's also just a tiny edge of sweetness to it that I think makes it more pleasant to smell than a lot of the other noir style fragrances. Uh, hi, editing Declan cutting in here. One thing that I neglected to say here is that it also smells very soapy. Soapy in a clean and fresh way, not in an Irish spring type way. So something that I thought about saying in the shower before I started filming this, but for whatever reason, as soon as the camera turns on, my mind turns to mush, so. Just wanted to throw that in here. This is really, really good. I think it's a lot of different things coming together to make for a really great, interesting fragrance, but unlike 1001, this is not too much of anything. It's all perfectly balanced, it's all very cohesive, and in the air, this is just magic. Don't stick your wrist right up to your face and smell it, it doesn't smell good like that, but if you move your hands and catch a whiff of it, it smells really, really good. I am gonna give Oud Noir a 9.5 out of 10. In second place, we have Amber Elixir. This one is so good. This is a mix of amber, again, the very sweet amber that I talked about earlier, and dried fruits. And this is actually a surprisingly realistic take on dried fruit. You get that sort of tart sweetness that you get when you have a handful of raisins or dried cranberries, whatever. And it creates a fragrance that is so fun, so vibrant and enjoyable. This is really just a pleasure to wear. It really lets the Virtus Amber shine. On paper, any use of dried fruit in a fragrance sounds kind of weird. It doesn't sound like it should work, but somehow it does. I think if you have a very sweet amber fragrance, 
and you know what dried fruit smells like. If that combination sounds appealing to you, that is very much what this fragrance is. There's not a whole lot to say about it because it is very simple, but regardless, it is also very good. I am gonna give Amber Elixir a 10 out of 10. I think this is a really great, fun fragrance. I actually looked to get myself a bottle, but it was either a bit more expensive than other Virtus fragrances or it was sold out. But yeah, this is really wonderful stuff. Amber Elixir comes in second place. So if a fragrance that I'm that crazy about comes in second place, that must mean that the first place fragrance is a banger. And absolutely it is. This is Narcosis at number one. Now will the camera focus? Somehow I don't think so. It's trying. There it is. I absolutely love these bottles. I love the cutout here. I think it's what separates these bottles from being just a regular run-of-the-mill bland cube bottle. There's also a really cool bit of attention to detail here. So you can see the Virtus logo on the sprayer points down towards the Virtus logo on the cutout. And the metallic cap, when you snap it on, the logo on top also points down to the cut out on the side, which I think is really cool. I love a great bottle design, and I think that's just a really small attention to detail that shows that they went the extra mile with the design here. Anyways, enough with the bottles. They all have the same bottles, just in different colors. What does Narcosis smell like? It smells like rhubarb and mango. It is so sweet, so fresh. This is so fun. And really, I think this is one of the more unique fragrances I've ever smelled. Mango and rhubarb are notes that get used less frequently than other fruits. Is rhubarb a fruit? I actually don't know. Anyways, there are two notes that get used less frequently than others. Mango pops up here and there, but rhubarb is generally relegated to the background. But in Narcosis, it is the star of the show. Oh man, this fragrance is just so unique, so fun. If you're a lover of fruity fragrances like I am, you have to get your nose on this. No amount of me saying, oh, it smells like mango and rhubarb will really get across just how awesome this is. I think this is an absolute showstopper. I think this is gonna be killer in the summer. If you're in the market for a warm weather fragrance, for a fruity fragrance, or just a really fun fragrance in general, get yourself a decant of this. Narcosis is extremely good, and it is my favorite of the Virtus fragrances that I have tried. Oh, also, uh, one big plus of this, is that this bottle was outrageously cheap. A lot of these Virtus fragrances are really affordable. I got this on sale at Max Aroma for $125, and this is a 100 milliliter bottle, not just 50. Most of these Virtus fragrances at discounters are somewhere around that price range. Some of them, such as Amber Elixir, are more. I think that one is generally around the $200, maybe pushing $220. And I'm not a rich man, that was sort of what stopped me from getting Amber Elixir, but for $125 gosh darn dollars, this is an incredible deal. You can smell how high the quality is on this. It lasts forever. It projects like crazy. $125 is a steal of a deal for something this good. So Narcosis is my favorite, but get your nose on Virtus fragrances because their value is just unbelievable. So there you have it. Those are my eight Virtus fragrances ranked from worst to best. I do sort of regret not springing for the discovery set that they have. I know you can get, I think, all of their fragrances in one kit and it's like $120 or something something like that. I really, really like this house. I think their value is incredible. So let me know what you think of Veritas in the comments. Subscribe and like and whatever, all that crap, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.